Hi, this is Wynn Claybaugh. Welcome to my Best of Masters weekly audio blog for AmericanSalon.com. Next up is one of my favorite clips from the last 20 years of inspiring interviews from Masters Audio Club. You know, I'm working with one salon owner in particular that comes to mind that wants to build a stronger team within her salon. So, you know, it's okay. So the goal is to build a stronger team within your salon. First question is, how much time are you spending with each team member? Mm -hmm. Well, well, not really that much. Well, the key to building a strong team is to connect with them in an interpersonal way in the salon, is to connect with those individuals. And the only way you're going to connect with them is to spend time with them. So why don't we look at once a week, you're spending five minutes with every single member of your staff. Individually Indi- or all of it? Individually. Because I have a feeling some people listening, oh, I do connect with them at that bitch session staff meeting no. that we had. That, that's not what you're talking about. Individually. Got it. Okay. So then, five minutes. Five minutes. Every week. Yeah. Okay. So the first thing you have to do is you have to look at your calendar, you have to find a day, and you have to schedule out five minutes with every single person. And what, what's happening in those five minutes? What are you telling them well, is supposed to be accomplished the, in those five the minutes? The first thing is I want you to find out from them where they want to go with your company. So basically what you're doing with the owner, you're yeah. having them trickle that down. And I, want do you, I want you to do with your staff and your team what I'm doing with you. And then ob- obviously there's profit centers that people want to, that people want to improve on the retention, the rebooking, then there's those areas. So my thing to them is, okay... Or before you can actually influence somebody, they have to connect with you. They have to trust you. They have to understand that you have their best interest in mind. So you need a few of these five-minute sessions but to hear what they have to say, to hear what they think, before you can start putting into them what you think should happen. I think I know what you're saying. It's not like, like before you can withdraw, you have to deposit. Yeah. And, and a lot of salon owners are trying to withdraw I want better numbers, higher sales, right. better performance, better attitude. So they're asking to withdraw yeah. from their people, but they haven't deposited they haven't anything. Covey talks about that probably the most succinctly about the emotional bank account, where you're either making emotional deposits or you're making emotional withdrawals. This, the key to leadership is to make sufficient enough emotional deposits where your people really believe your motivation is based on the benefit of the team, the, the whole well, what you said is you have to build trust. So give us ideas on how you would build that trust and, like you said, um, deposit into that emotional bank account. Well, I think one of the ways in which you would build trust is ask one of your team members, you know, how do you think you're doing? Or how do you think I'm doing? Or how are we as a salon doing? Hmm. You know, when you joined the salon, you had all these expectations and we had this great non-negotiable and these commitment letters that we signed are we living up to your expectation? Hmm. Now, to be vulnerable enough as an owner to hear what your staff have to say, to give you feedback, I think, you know, goes back to the recall part of the story. Is everything's just information. Right. You don't take it personally. You can take it personally in the sense if you want to make an improvement, but you can, to be honest enough, to be vulnerable enough to listen to what somebody wants to say about you and your salon and not be offended is a, a great way of building trust. When you ask salon owners to do that, are they okay with that or what's their response to well, that? Well, I think, you know, I'm relatively new at this. We're, you know, this is just a new venture that I've been doing for the last six months. So many people are so far away from this place. Right. You know, we're, I'm working with people to get them to book the five-minute appointments, to book the five-minute coaching sessions. So I really, to be honest with you, I haven't had an awful lot of people that are at that the precipice of actually opening the kimono to go tell me what you think of how well we're doing. Yeah, but you're a master at that. You you are a master at investing in people to where there's trust built. How, how do you do that? What have you learned over your you know, 20, 30 years? Well, I, I worked with a lot of younger stylists and as I the longer I was in this business, the, the more the stylists became younger. That's just, you know... <laughs> Right, yeah. And uh, the attitude I had isn't necessarily reflected in the attitude they would have. So I had to invest an awful lot of time working with younger, newer stylists to really realize that I wasn't an old fart and that I was somebody that had something of value and I really wanted them to do well. And, you know, if I take 10 people, if I work with 10 people, 
you know, maybe I lost three or four people that didn't fit into the culture, that didn't belong to the culture of what we are doing, but they couldn't say that I didn't listen to what they had to say or I wasn't concerned, you know, even to the point of calling them up when they decided to quit or leave or were fired and kind of touch base with them. Because you get to a place of maturity where you realise it's not about me. It's not about this person leaving doesn't define who I am. Right. You know, and it just means that they didn't fit into this culture. But right. it, I don't have to crucify them or vilify them or condemn them. Mm-hmm.